This is live broadcast from Trinidad under the series The Diamond Sutra and the sub-series is on various aspects of meditation. Meditation, meditation is the art and science of removing the dust from the mind. The master cannot answer your question directly. He has to speak in an indirect way because questions relating to existence cannot be answered directly. He will have to look at your innerness, your inner preparation and then respond accordingly. How does mind gather dust. Mind operates through the organs of perception and action, the eyes, the ears, the nose and so on and so forth. When the light falls and these organs get activated, and they interact in a particular situation in the outside world, they gather impressions. And these perceptions are brought to a space within your mind. Depending on your social upbringing, conditionings, Diverse information comes to the mind and these create disturbance. There is another story of a disciple of Joshua. For many years she had stayed with Joshua, but he could not catch the secret of meditation. So one day he asked, he had been there with the master for quite some time. Nothing happened with him. No ray of light, no lamp was lit, no fragrance of dhyan. He remained as he was. One day he inquired from Joshu, I have been here for so long, nothing has happened yet. What should I do? Is there anything more that I can do? This is like anybody else. Joshua replied, do one thing. I know another master who is the owner of a guest house in another city. Go there. Maybe you will learn through him what you could not learn from me. The disciple became very happy. Joyfully, he rushed to the place to meet the other master. But on reaching, he became sad because the owner of the guest house was a poor, ordinary man and he was not a master. He was running a guest house. It was an impressive guest house. He saw no possibility of learning. He thought maybe Joshua had made a joke or simply was trying to get rid of him. Disciple was in a dilemma. It was quite late in the night. He had no choice but to stay overnight. He took the permission of the owner of the guest house to stay overnight. He told the owner, Master Joshua had sent him to learn from him, but it seemed there is no possibility of learning and it seems there was a mix-up. Joshua had told him all that he could not learn from him, he could learn from the owner of the guest. The guest house owner told this disciple that he did not know Joshua and that he was not a master. Also he had nothing to teach but now that you are here, night had fallen, 
you better stay here until the morning. And next day you could leave. The disciple remembered the words of the master telling him that he had to observe the behavior of the owner of the guest house. As he would say nothing to him, he had said, try to understand his silent message. He remembered the words of the master, so he decided to observe. Sometimes the owner cleaned wares, other times he washed clothes. He was only involved in such acts and in fact there seemed to be nothing to learn from such acts. The night came. The owner went to sleep. Next morning when the disciple woke up, he sought the permission to leave because there was nothing for him to learn. A real master will have nothing tangible. You have to observe. You have to look very carefully every movement of the master. He may be engaged in ordinary things, but how does he convert an ordinary act into an act of meditation with full awareness? So before leaving, the disciple was curious to know one thing from the owner, so he inquired, I observed your life during the day, but what did you do before going to sleep? He was worried that Master Joshua would inquire as to why he did not observe the entire day, day's routine of the owner. He inquired from the owner of the guest house. The owner said very simple thing. He replied before going to the bed, I washed all the waves and then slept without any tension because all the pots have been cleaned. When I woke up in the morning, the pots have gathered a bit of dust which I washed off easily. And one thing he said that is significant, dust accumulates even if the pots are I do are lying idle. As a housewife, you know it well. You take out a particular pot or item from the cupboard and before using you rinse it. But this happens unconsciously. Do you know even if the pot is lying idle, it gathers dust. So he said, when I woke up in the morning, the pots had gathered a bit of dust, which I washed off. Dust accumulates even if the pots are lying idle. Even in activity, dust gathers. Time passes, dust gathers. Time is dust as well. In the morning I rinse the pot and now everything is fine and in order. The disciple could not understand all that the owner told him. Because like anybody else, this disciple has his own criteria that the master will be like that, he will teach in this way and he will give sermons on the scriptures, he will chant some sutras or use some words, some messages from Sanskrit or other languages and so on and so forth. But nothing like that happened. He was talking about ordinary day-to-day -day activity. Even in inactivity, the dust gathers. 
The pot is in the cupboard. It has been washed two days before. But before you use, you rinse it. You do it unconsciously, but you never learn the message from this. Even in inactivity, the pot gathers dust. Mind is synonym with pot, where just as in pot we cook the dishes for the day, in the same way mind is a pot where we cook, depending on what ingredients you put, you may cook misery out of that, you may cook bliss out of that, you may cook joy out of that. It all depends on what ingredients you are using in the pot to prepare the dish for the day. And even in inactivity, the mind gathers dust. The disciple could not understand all that the owner told him and return empty-handed. When he returned, seeing him, Joshua said, You missed again. Because if you have really grasped the matter, it must reflect through your countenance, through your face. You do not have to tell me. Your joy will manifest on your face. If you have learned something, if you have experienced something, if something has happened deep within your anatomy or physiology, it must reflect through your face. So, when he returned, seeing him, Joshu said, You have missed a game. This alone is the secret. The disciple could not understand all that the owner had told him. During the day dust gathers, and when you dream, again dust gathers. Mind gets dirty even in simple act. Mind gets disturbed. In the morning again clean the pot and keep on cleaning, but you can completely clean the pot only when you have finished the last meal. This is what Joshua had told the earlier disciple, if you have finished the last meal, go and wash the plate. Joshua did not even say when you have finished the morning meal. Remember he did not use the word, the phrase morning meal. He said, the last meal of the evening, an evening meal is taken when sun is setting. It means the last desire of the day. Even the last desire is consumed. If you have done this, if you have done this, then what is the delay? Go and wash the plate. And if you have not consumed the last desire, do not ask of dhyana, do not ask of meditation. If your desires have not finished, if you have not known the world, do not ask of dhyana. Without being finished with the world, dhyana will not happen. And as long as you are living in the world, you have to be bridge between the inner and outer. But how can you be bridge between the inner and the outer? It is your awareness. It is your awareness. It is your mindfulness. Because mindfulness is the technique through which you grow into awareness. You are aware of your mind. You are mindful of mo moment to moment happening. Then this will become a bridge. And one day awareness will grow into you. 
you cannot with mindfulness you cannot act like a child child who is walking through a, you know, a shopping mall along with his parents whatsoever he sees his eyes fall on that and he wants that particular item that particular toy and no sooner than his eyes are moved from that particular object to another he wants that and the child is indecisive whether he wants that toy or this toy such is the situation of the mind but mindfulness is the technique that helps you to analyze the situation analyze your needs i am talking about the difference the economic the difference between needs and desires and wants maybe we may want everything but we do not need everything that we want and then comes desire we can desire only that which is within our means you may desire something which is not in your capability to acquire this will create dust on the mind so when you grow into you use the technique of mindfulness on a moment to moment basis and all circumstances and situations you grow into awareness and this art of growing into awareness the science of growing into awareness through the technique of mindfulness leads to you to a state of inner tranquility bliss and meditation has happened your awareness that you are now you are no more ego instead there is light there is awareness and this awareness bridges your inner and outer life but you have to use the technique of mindfulness to move from one realm to another if your desires have not finished if you have not known the world do not ask of him but i add one thing to it if you are mindful if you are practicing the art of mindfulness the science of mindfulness then it would be easier through mindfulness we know the true color of the world we know how to go through the various situations then we use the technique of breathing in a particular situation to change that situation where your perceptions has put you into if your journey of the body is still continuous and you are not tired of it if you have not known the futility of this all do not ask of meditation from a master the master will not answer they are like little children unless the world becomes futile or you become mindful of it religion will not take birth in you the futility of the world and its many color should be your experience now that you have heard kabir nanak 
Buddha, Jesus saying so. Unless it, unless it becomes your experience, no evolution is possible. You have fulfilled many desires. Stop. Now it's time to wash your plate. Stop running behind money, status, children, husband, wife. You may stop, but your mind will continue and you will keep looking at the world. Joshua is right. If your last meal before sleep is finished, only then you can wash your plate. If last desire is not fulfilled, then you cannot wash the plate because plate have is still left over food. So what you do? If there is a leftover food and you cannot consume, you throw it in the dustbin. And this art of Throwing the leftover food in the dustbin is the very foundation on which mind's conditioning and its subconscious and unconscious mind continues to do. All that unknowingly you throw it in the garbage bin goes into your unconscious and subconscious mind. The leftover food there is a process of disposing of. You can use this to recycle in the form of making the fertilizer. Then it is not going into your subconscious and unconscious. Joshua is right if your last meal before sleep is finished, only then you can wash plate. If last desire is fulfilled, only then. But you remember strangely enough, desires are never fulfilled. The more you go on fulfilling them, the more they will arise. One gets fulfilled, many arise. This you see around you every day. Yet you remain unaware of this. Food never satiates hunger. If it were so, you would have never been hungry again. Water never quenches your thirst. Drinking water gives birth to a new thirst. For a while you may feel fulfilled, but soon thirst again becomes intense. The desire for sex never fulfills. For a while you may feel satisfied. That too happens because you feel tired. But the desire will soon arise again. This is the life. Now you can use the technique of mindfulness. Knowing pretty well that food does not satiate your hunger. It only does for a certain period of time. That's why we take a couple of meals. The food that we eat is empty of calorie. If it is empty of calorie, you will want to know what to eat now. After eating a packet of rice and a cook, what to eat now? This process will continue. But if you have moved from empty calories to nutritious food, balanced meal. Then you will not be hungry so soon. And then the next stage is nutritionally dense food. What is nutritionally dense food? Including in your diet, the food items that are nutritionally dense, that nuts, dry fruits, the diets 
which is rich in protein. All these are nutritionally dense food. And if your meal is balanced, but here your understanding, your mindfulness is important to create a balanced meal. We are very particular in creating a balanced meal for our dining table. But do we have learned the science and the art of creating a balanced food for the mind? How much you have to put yourself into the world? How much time is required for that? And how much time do you require for the inner world? This particular balance helps to create a balanced meal. You know very well, food does not satiate the hunger, water does not quench your thirst, sex does not fulfill your desire. You can change the quality of these. Just as you have moved from empty calorie to nutritionally rich food and from nutritionally rich to nutritionally dense foods. In the same way, you can transform your empty sex calories into nutritionally fulfilling air calories to nutritionally dense and that will give you a different kind of satiation which is very essential otherwise just as after eating and a, a platter of empty calories you want to eat, want to know what to eat now. So when you have entered into your act of sex and gained empty calories, you will next moment again be thinking about sex. As a result, after fulfilling one desire, be it of food, sex, or any other material gain, you realize its futility only for a while. And then again the same desire arises. Again these desires appear meaningful to you. Although after one act of sex, you realize the futility of it, but it lasts only a short while. This is the cycle that continues unabated and it gathers dust. So Joshu says if you have finished the last meal, that means you have entered into the act of sex mindfully in a nutritionally dense manner. That can happen only if you are mindful and you enter into the act meditatively. Then eventually I can assure you if you enter into the act of sex meditatively mindfully for a period of 30 days, 3 weeks to 3 months, each time you enter, you enter into meditatively, you will find a different quality of joy, a kind of fulfillment that you have never experienced before and by the time you attain the age of 40, sex will become meaningless. Otherwise, you are ready to go into the grave, but you still go on hankering for it. 
this is the technique, this is the science. Mindfulness is the first step to go into the science of making a balanced, nutritionally dense food each time you go on the dining table. Whether you are going to have breakfast, lunch or dinner or you are going on the dining table to have a physical relation or operating into the outer world for your living each time you enter meditatively using the technique of mindfulness of course this is the beginning mindfulness is the first step once you have entered into that domain then other things are mentioned to you to use Joshu says if you have finished the last meal then wash your plate quite logically it may seem to you but the same cannot be true about dhyan you want to know what dhyan is without being finished with the last desire in the pot of mind you consume meals of your desire in the pot of mind you consume the desires. This is not happening now. It has been happening for lives. Each time when there is a leftover food, you throw it in the garbage bin, it goes into your subconscious and unconscious mind. The mind is dirty. If the last meal is over, then wash the mind. This alone is dhyan. When the last desire is finished, then the process of cleaning will start. So the first thing the master tells you that use the science, use the technique of mindfulness. Be mindful of all that is happening in the part of the mind. Anger is coming. You become aware of it. In an anger, in a state of anger, you breathe in a particular way. You have known this. You are now to reverse that process. If you do not breathe in that way, then anger cannot happen. For anger, to grab you, the breathing has to be in a particular way. And firstly, your breathing will be short, haphazard, words may not form properly, you may fumble. So, if you know this, you can change the direction. By first of all, speaking slow, observing your breathing. Although while interacting in the outer world of objects and beings, these things are normal. But then, through mindfulness and its various associate techniques, you can change each activity that you perform on a day-to-day -day basis for your living, for interacting with others into an act of meditation. And the entire process of meditation is how to mindfully change the quality of each activity. 
I have told you eating is an important aspect which you cannot overlook as long as there is body. You can eat food with empty calories. But when there is awareness, you know what is good for your body. The sea salt because of the nuclear waste, it is not suitable for human consumption. You can switch over to your research and you switch over to other salts, Himalayan pink salt which is nutritionally dense, rich with 84 vitamins and minerals. This is mindfully you are moving. Now you know the potato fries, although potato has its own benefits, but the calories are empty into it. And also the kind of oil that is used for frying that is harmful because it is not consumed by the cells of the body and it stays there and creates the, clogs the arteries. You are mindful of this. You are changing your dietary patterns from nutritionally empty calories to nutritionally rich food by changing the salt which is very important by changing the oil because every cell of your body requires the oil for its for lubrication and movement 